So welcome everybody to this video on the structural vector autoregression in R. So the structural vector regre autoregression is an extension of our regular vector autoregression in that we start to incorporate back some a priori expectations or some structure in the model as the name infers. And uh, we're going to do this uh, using a couple of theories that we picked up along the way. So uh, in this example, we're going to use Philippine data on output gap, on the inflation rate, and on the policy rate of the central bank. And we'll see how monetary policy uh, tries to react to shocks in the output gap. So that's what we're going to focus on in this, uh, in this model. So uh, first, okay, we're going to load the required packages. So the required packages are the, the packages I have here. So if you haven't installed them yet, just install them on your Mac or your PC and they should work fine. Then we call them using the library command. So I already have them installed on my Mac. So I'll go ahead and load these packages. Okay. So I've loaded them. And the first step is for us to load the data set. Load the data set. So I'll name my data set macro just because whatever. And I'll, uh, it's in a CSV file. So uh, read underscore CSV will read the file. And let's do file.choose. Okay. So that opens up a dialog box that I can pick. So I have it saved somewhere here. So that's there, Philippine underscore SUR, and we have that one there. So let's look at the data set. So head macro, which just shows the first few rows. Okay, and we have here three variables, our output gap, the RRP, which is the policy rate of the Philippine Central Bank, and CPI, which is essentially the inflation rate that we have. Okay, so first step is we need to convert to time series objects. So, and uh, the data set we loaded is a data frame. So we need to try to convert that to a time series object, each, each variable to be converted to a time series object. So let's call the output gap Y, that's Y there. And uh, the command to do that is TS. Then we're gonna get from the macro data set that we have output gap, okay then uh, all data points start at the year 2000 okay january 1 and the data is reported quarterly so frequency is equal to four so if you do that you should see a y series there then we're going to do that for all three series that we have so inflation let's call that pi so this one will just change to um there should be a uh, cpi whoops cpi and that should be it. So we have pi now. Then last we have uh, R. So that's gonna be our uh, policy rate or our interest rate. So that's RRP and we're good to go. So we now have our three time series. So just uh, to, to try and plot them. So let's try to plot the series and uh, let's go with Y first. So TS underscore plot. So that's the command to plot. So let's plot Y. So the output, this is how the output gap looks like. Okay, so notice the graph is interactive because it uses a plotly base. So if you use that command, you'll get this interactive graph. You can even zoom in to areas that you want. Okay, then let's see pi or the inflation rate, TS plot pi. And it looks like this. Okay, so you can tell and that's the inflation we have. Okay, then uh, last, Let's plot uh, our R or our, uh, our policy rate, which is here. Okay, so we're around here. Okay, so the most crucial part in our SVAR is uh, setting the restrictions. And the way we're going to do that is, is we're going to create a value for our matrix, okay, our matrix, which represents the values of the contem of the contemporaneous correlations affecting the variables in the system okay so there could be contemporaneous or simultaneous effects inside of the var system and essentially we're going to try to model that and set our restrictions there so in this process okay we're essentially identifying the structure of our structural var using the restrictions we impose in this matrix so how we do this is we're going to create a matrix. So I'll name it a mat. 
So that stands for uh, essentially uh, my A matrix. Okay, and uh, I have three variables here. So I'm going to create a matrix that contains uh, for good for three variables. So that's done using the diag command and that creates essentially an identity matrix. So you have here one zero uh zero zero one zero so that's an identity matrix okay now what we'll do is we'll order the variables later but what you need to know is that my var my the first variable I'll order is um the output gap because that's the one uh that will lead to the policy implication followed by inflation so that's variable two and followed by uh the interest rate or the policy rate which is three now this is uh the the restriction as uh, that I'll impose okay so um as we said okay th this matrix of contemporaneous shocks affecting the variables in the system and what we need to do is we need to identify the coefficients that will eventually end up being and essentially those restrictions that we're going to impose in this matrix are based on economic intuition okay so in the matrix okay and what we'll do is uh, we will impose that the behavior of the policy rate is attributable to shocks in inflation and the output gap. Okay, and we're going to structure this matrix in such a way that the policy rate only affects the inflation rate and the output gap with a lag, i.e. the policy rate cannot affect uh, inflation and the output gap in the same period. So we want to see how the policy rate uh, sorts of react to changes in the uh, in the inflation rate and the output gap in the same period. So let's see how that goes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our restrictions as follows. Okay, so we're gonna block out three things which we want to be free and then the rest we're gonna leave as zero which will be our restriction. So I'll explain that a bit as we go. So I'm gonna change the values of certain elements in the matrix that we have. So uh, row two, uh, one. Okay, I'll change the value of that to NA. Then I'll also change uh, row three, one. I'll also change that to NA. And I'll also change uh, 3, 2, and I'll set that to any as well. So let's see our matrix now. And if you'll notice, okay, well, well what happened is that these three uh, variables here, the elements in the lower triangular of the matrix are now NAs. In essence, I am allowing whatever the coefficients end up being here to be free for them to be estimated in my system. And I am essentially imposing these restrictions here. The zeros you see in the upper triangular are my restrictions. Since, uh, if you remember, the ordering that will impose is output gap, then inflation, then the interest rate, I'm imposing that the output gap can affect both the, the inflation rate and the interest rate in the same period, while the inflation rate can only affect the uh, interest rate and the interest rate cannot affect the inflation rate or the output gap in the same period. And we'll see that as we go along. So we're going to use this matrix to do uh, the restrictions and to estimate the S bar. Okay, so let me just move some spaces. Then next step for us is to uh, build the model. So build the model. And we're going to do that using uh, the C bind command. So I'm going to essentially just group the variables together. So that's Y, pi, and then R. So I'm grouping those variables together. Then I'll just change the names of that uh, to be um, C bind, uh, just so we're more formal, output gap, output gap, uh, inflation inflation and lastly uh rp so i'll have that there okay and then first uh, thing we'll do so we essentially bind the variables we need to select a lag order lag order selection and to do that we're just gonna use the lag select command so lag select okay i'm sorry the var select command so var select okay var select and we're going to use our object SV that we just created. Then let's set lag max equal to, hmm, say, 8. And the type is equal to both. So let's just set that there. Then let's see, uh, whoops, 
I actually this an equal it should be that okay then we have lag select uh, dollar sign selection let's see what they think or what R thinks the optimal lag is so we find that five is our optimal lag there so we're gonna use five so let's now uh, start by uh, estimating the model okay the model so to estimate an S var essentially you need to first estimate a standard var and then uh, use an s var command that we have inside the vars package to be able to incorporate the restrictions that we uh, have here so we're gonna first estimate a regular var and incorporate those restrictions there so let's call our var uh let's set a var here so let's say uh model let's name our model model one okay and this is a var so our var uh, will be the variables inside the object sv and our lag order is five, okay? And then let's set season is equal to null. So we don't want any seasonal effects for now. Exogenous equals null. And then type is equal to const. So a basic var, standard var. And let's enter that there. So we have the object there. Then let's now build our svar uh, model. So let's name that svar mod one. Then uh, svar, is the command for a structural vector autoregression then that comes from our regular var so we named uh, our initial var estimation as model one okay then what we do is uh the option ama uh a mate okay a mate uh it allows you to input a matrix of uh restrictions or what you find to be the matrix of contemporaneous correlations so Let's name that as let's set that to the matrix that we just created. So that's a map there. Then uh, we we can set a b map too, which is the one related to the lags. But let's set that as null for now. Hessian equals to true. So these are just standard options. I don't think you even need to put them. S method is equal to c scoring. So these are the ways that you can solve it. Uh, so you can just read the guide on the procedure for that but these are just methods to solve it and let's see it will run uh let's ignore this uh uh warning and then let's see what it estimated as our coefficients okay so notice okay we have three na's here in our original matrix because we allow that to be free but we set those restrictions there so let's see and you'll notice that these restrictions still hold, but now it estimated okay, the parameters in our A matrix. So we have some structural parameters now. Then uh, next, what we're gonna do is we're going to get our impulse response functions. Okay, impulse response functions. And let's kind of tell a story with it. So let's start with the output gap. Okay, so S var OG. Okay, so IRF uh, S var. So IRF is the command to generate that uh, impulse response. Then let the impulse okay, be equal to the output gap. Okay. And we want the response okay, to be equal to output gap as well. So we want to see the effect of an exogenous shock to output gap. Okay. And uh, we expect this one, of course, to be a positive one okay, as for OG. So we expect the output gap to increase. Okay, plot OG, whoops, uh, S var OG, and let's see. So that's the graph that we have here. Okay, so that's the graph that we have there. So uh, then let's just bring uh, what you'll notice. I'm sorry, let's, let's kind of explain it first. Okay, at the shock, okay, if you notice at period one, uh, the output gap increased quite a bit. Okay, so it shocked up then it falls a bit then goes up again falls a bit then goes up again but essentially you exhibit the downward a long-term downward trend but initially okay there was a huge spike in the output gap and that's expected because the initial reaction of a shock to output gap a positive shock would be an increase in the output gap which suggests um increase in the inflationary gap that's present in the economy so let's now go to the shock of inflation a shock to inflation so let's shock okay inflation by the output gap so what would happen 
to inflation should the output gap increase. So we set impulse to be equal to the output gap. And our response this time, our response is equal to uh, inflation. So what would happen to inflation okay, if it was positively shocked by the output gap? So S bar inflation, okay, S bar int. Then let's plot our S bar in to see the impulse response. And we get that here. So notice, because of the inflationary gap, we were able to see that the output gap increased, uh, the, I'm sorry, the inflation increased, but then after a while, it started to decrease around six quarters in. Okay, and then last, let's, uh, let's do the IRF for the uh, for the policy rate and then let's try to bring all three together so that we can try to explain what's going on. So IRF for S bar mod, okay? We let our impulse be equal to, let's see how inflation this time, how inflation affects uh, of how it affects the RP or the policy rate. So essentially this is trying to predict what will the central bank do or what should it do in that case and let's see so s var uh, rrp okay then we have a uh, plot s var rrp let's see how this is and we also see an increase in the policy rate so if you think about it it's kind of uh this way okay the impulse response functions are actually quite intuitive in telling the story. So we started with a shock to output gap, and it goes like this. If a shock in the output gap starts the sequence, say we increase the output gap, which is why we ordered it first, it's expected that the output gap will, that, that the output gap will increase. That increase in the output gap will increase the inflationary gap which means that the economy is producing more than it was potentially expected to, which may cause the economy to overheat. That scenario of potential overheating will push inflation upward as productivity continues to increase, right? So that's why we see here that inflation is going up because of the unexpected shock to, out, to out, the output gap, inflation pushes up, okay? Now, since inflation goes up okay the central bank sees that the output gap increases and that inflation increases but since its mandate is to control inflation what it will do is it will try to limit that inflation okay by doing what by increasing its rate as well so that it can stop inflation uh, or stop the econ stop the economy from overheating and that's essentially why the rrp or the policy rate goes up as well and all of this is essentially a typical monetary response or a monetary policy response by a central bank. And we validated that using our structural vector autoregression.